Hi, and welcome to our freshman mechanical engineering class. This is Dr. Stacy Bamberg. I teach it with Dr. Romer and Dr. Mascaro. ME1000 is the first class on the spiral curriculum at the University of Utah. This video lecture will introduce you to some of the design tools you will be learning about this fall. The idea that you will be designing a robot as part of a team may initially be both exciting and a bit intimidating. The challenge all designers face is that open-ended problems can have many solutions. We need to learn about how to define the problem so that we can find appropriate solutions. As engineers, our job is to take customer needs which may be conflicting and confusing and come up with a good problem statement and ultimately to define design specifications. In ME1000 this fall, you will begin to learn about design methodologies that assist with this process. It is worth noting now that design is rarely a linear process, but rather we typically iterate as we make decisions and consider trade-offs. In our spiral curriculum, we use the ABCs of design. As you'll note from the slide heading, these are actually the ABC squared and DE squared of design. There are a lot of steps. We first assess, then brainstorm, then compute and construct, then decide, and finally, we evaluate our resulting designs, often finding that we need to evopterate. That is, we find that our designs evolve as they are optimized and we iterate. Today we will talk about the first step, assess. We first need to define the real problem. First we need to know who we are designing for. For instance, you might be hired by a company, your client, to design a new project for teenagers, your customers, and we need to all agree on a problem definition. We need to make sure that our objectives are well thought out and clear to everyone. We need to identify all the constraints on the problem and generate functions to further define the problem. At this point, you probably have a few questions. What are objectives, constraints, and functions, and how do we get a good problem definition? Well, you are already learning design term terminology. Problem definitions are a broad statement of our goals that we all agree on. The trick is to be neither too broad nor too narrow. We don't want to overly limit our, our design solutions that we will come up with, but yet we also have to make sure we are being specific about what exactly the client needs. Objectives describe what the design will be, constraints are limits placed on the design, and functions describe what the design will do. These are really important definitions to know, so we will look at each of these in more detail. Alright, as we said, objectives are things your design should be. That makes them adjectives. First, you generate a list, and then you organize these into an objectives tree. In order to later get the best design solution you can, you want to be independent of solutions. For instance, if your problem statement involves getting to Mars, you don't want to have an objective that is, be a rocket. Now you've ruled out UFOs and teleportation. Making sure you stick to adjectives will help you avoid this. To be complete, we also include constraints in these trees. Constraints are things that your design should not be. In other words, more or less the opposite of objectives. They can also be adjectives, although more often they are binary, in that typically you either meet or do not meet a constraint, and thus you limit your solutions. Some examples are dimensions, weight, and cost. These often come up in engineering problems. If your constraint is le that your device must be weigh less than one kilogram, then either it achieves that constraint or it does not. After you generate a big list of objectives, you start at the top of the tree with entries that are related to why you want to do things and put how you want to do them at the bottom. As you figure out how to best arrange your tree, there is often rearranging, so we suggest using post-its. That way you can put them all out on the board and start to figure out how to group them. Again, remember whys go at the top and hows at the bottom. The whys are going to be more general, while your hows are starting to get more specific. Let's look at an example that shows a good arrangement. With groupings of objectives and constraints that are related and that move from Y's at the top, which in this diagram is on the left side, to How's at the bottom on the right side. This is for a, a design of a safe beverage container. The constraints are in the ovals and the objectives are in the rectangles. You might want to hit pause to take a closer look. 
Lastly, functions are things your design must do. These can be primary, which are more general, like contain liquid for the beverage container example from the previous slide, or secondary, which are more specific, which are things that you need to do in order to achieve the more general functions, such as fill the container so that you can contain the liquid. Functions are verb noun pairs, such as contain liquid or fill container. Remember, objectives are adjectives. As you start to come up with things that are important to your design, if you're thinking of things that are adjectives, be something, those are going to be ob objectives. If you're starting to think about things that your design has to do, those are going to be things you want to phrase as verb noun pairs and they're going to be functions. Let's summarize. You start with a problem definition and move on to the objectives and constraints. Next, you develop functions for your design. These are all part of the big A assessment phase. Next week, we'll start to think about ideas for our designs by brainstorming means, which are ways that we can do the functions and be the objectives. Thanks for listening and we'll see you in class where we'll start to do some activities related to assessment. Thanks!